a package. I love getting a package. Let's see what's inside. Hey friends, I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole again today uh, with some tubes I recently purchased and uh, I'm going to give you uh, some ideas for some potential uses for them. Uh, I had to think of a few myself, um, but uh, I think I came up with some good ones. You may have an idea of uh, what I'm thinking uh, by the breadcrumbs I've left on the thumbnail for this video, even as uh, mythological as they might be. Be sure you hang around till the end of the video because I have another idea I'm going to share with you based on a schematic I recently saw that made me sit up and just say, whoa, first time I saw it. Um, it is definitely not your father's Fender Champ, although um, it is a single-ended amp. So buckle up and uh, let's go. All right, let's open the box. Uh, this is from eBay. I got this from uh, an eBay store called Audiopathic Distractions in Huntington. Is that Huntington or Huntington Beach, California? Yeah. Um, sometimes I buy tubes and uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them at the time. Um, but I was kind of like, I saw the specs on these and I was like, you know, this could be kind of cool. But... I'll save the surprise for you here. All right. What we have here? We have five tubes. Oh, and I opened the correct side so you don't even know what they are. All right. All right. First of all, those are joint Army Navy or JAN tubes. So let's flip these, flip these suckas over and you'll be absolutely scratching your head. These are 6A G seven Y's and a six A G seven Y is uh well let's just take one out. Yeah, I figured. Uh these boxes uh were accepted by the, the military or uh, in September of nineteen fifty-three. You can see the little little eagle on them. There we go. All right, of course I opened the wrong end. All right, so let's let's open that end. Manufactured by RCA. All right. Well, it looks like a old six L six, but it is not. You know of my uh, enjoyment with building with old TV tubes. Well, this is one from the earliest days of TV or some of the earliest days of TV anyway, the, the 40s and 50s. I think the first ones of these uh, were produced in 1948, might be the earliest tube sheet that I have seen on these. Yeah, not much to look at. It is a, a, a big black tube, but these are video uh, amplifiers, but they also work for audio, obviously. It's a Pinto. The price was right on these things, and I thought, you know, I love building with stuff that I probably shouldn't be building with or that I have no business building with. So guess what? We're going to have a project pretty soon with uh, six AG7Ys. You know, the funny thing about these is you can actually use these as output tubes or you could use it as a, as a preamp tube. Um, it has a very high transconductance. I think um, 10,000 was the micromos was the was the rating on that, and it's very high, um, probably to the point where it would it would almost be too much. But hey, it was a video amplifier, so um, it definitely amplifies. So, what are we going to do with it? Well, I don't know yet. I've got an idea though. Um, I can show you a quick um, schematic I've drawn up. Uh, maybe we'll do two. Uh, maybe we'll do a single-ended one and a uh, and a push-pull one. Um, the cool thing about these is they only in in single-ended use they only uh, output about three watts. So it's a big tube, but it is good for home use. And I would say probably somewhere in the neighborhood of eight watts in a push-pull pair in a cathode bias. So. Um, you know, if you're looking for a tube, usually I recommend an Octal's, a 6K6 for home use, but 
this uh, 687 or 687Y might just um, fit the bill for a, a, a power tube for you that um, is good for home use. So let's go take a look at some schematics. Before we get to the schematics, we're going to take a quick spin through the 6AG7's data sheet. Now, as many of you know, I am always on the lookout for power tubes that are uh, low wattage, let's just say, that uh, you can, for lack of a better term, I, I call it power scaling. I can sort of adapt power tubes, and anybody can. I, I'm not unique, for sure. Um, you can adapt uh, power tubes to various schematics to um, to lower the output, let's just say. You don't always have to use 6L6s or 6V6s. You can go with something lower, and in the same circuit, frequently, uh, you get the same type of uh, sound, except you do not have as high an output, which your neighbors and your spouse frequently, uh, and sometimes your kids, frequently thank you for. Um, at least they should. So anyway, let's let's go through here. One of some of the things that caught my eye with the 6AG7 were the low current draw on the heaters. Um, it's uh, slightly higher than a 6V6, but lower than an EL34. Uh, EL34 is about three quarters of an amp, and uh, a 6V6 is about half half an amp. This is falls right in the middle of that. Uh, you can see the characteristics. Plate voltage is 300, which incidentally is also the max. Grid number two voltage, this is uh, lower than I'm going to be running it, I believe. Oh, transconductance is actually 11,000 micromoles, um, or 11 uh, milliamps per volt if you're calculating on the slope. And maximum output with uh, in single-ended is 3 watts. So it's a reasonable amp to play around the house. But then 5 watts is reasonable to play around the house, too. However... You know, sometimes 3 watts is better than 5 watts, and sometimes it's imperceptibly lower than, than 5. So it's one of those things. I'm just giving you some options here. All right, so uh, there we go. Maximum are 300 and 300 on the plates and grid 2. And the dissipation max is 9. So in push-pull, we're going to get about 8 uh, at least with cathode bias, we're going to get about 8 to 10 watts uh, the outside on these. Not going to blow your eardrums, but it's certainly going to produce enough sound. And you know how the, how the sound is always louder with tube amps. This concludes the hardcore tube nerdiness portion of our video. So let's check out the circuits that I've put together for these tubes. Okay, our first circuit, probably not shockingly, is based on the... Supero 6420 Thunderbolt. And uh, if you take a look at this and you squint real hard, it kind of looks like it. What we're after here is, uh, is a Thunderbolt that produces about a third of the wattage. And with the 6AG7 uh, power tubes, maybe we get there. The lore, of course, uh, as many of you know, is that Jimmy Page played a Thunderbolt 6420 on some of the early Led Zeppelin recordings. And uh, it has since, over the years, come out that it could have been a 1690T uh, Coronado, or it could have been not a Supero at all. Apparently, he himself had 40 or 50 of these small amps at his disposal to record through, and, um, and he's not really sure what, at least not definitively. So this is... Uh, this maybe captures the spirit of, of that amp. The other amp that um, I didn't know until recently is very similar to this and was actually produced by Valco is the Harmony 420. Very similar to this or to the, the 6420 schematics except it has a different tone stack and it is also uh, diode rectified. Here's the changes I've made. First of all we have the 6AG7 power tubes. I calculated out uh, the the load lines and came up with a 125 ohm 5 watt resistor and push pull. Um, if somebody out there is into uh, doing load lines, please check my math. One of those those features that that makes the 6420 sound like it does is its paraphase uh, phase inverter and. I've, I've replicated that here. Yeah, it's it's out of balance, and uh, I think uh, it contributes to uh, the unique sound of the, the Thunderbolt. 
The other thing uh, that contributes to its sound certainly is the volume and tone, and uh, those are those are very similar. So the curveball on this, um, if as if there weren't enough of of them already, is I've used a six SJ7 input mm-hmm. Pinto, to, uh, so it, it's very high gain. Um, one of the things that famously the the Thunderbolt has is one section of a 12AX7 in the input that um, a lot of people, including me, uh, obviously think was a waste of. of a tube. They could have used a 6AV6, something like that. Be that as it is, I have taken it upon myself to do something different. So 6SJ7 it is. I could have also used another 6SQ7, which I've used two of them in the uh, phase inverter. I also could have used a 6SF5 uh, in the input. Now, the 6SF5 and the 6SQ7 both have triodes. Uh, actually, the 6SF5 is a triode. The uh, 6SQ7 is a triode with uh, two diodes, but I could have used any of those tubes, and they have a gain of 100, so they're they're pretty spicy. Now, I went with a 5Y3 rectifier here. The 6420 has 6L6 GCs, uh, if I remember correctly, in the output, and we, we definitely don't need that kind of power. Um, it has a 5U4 rectifier. And I, I believe that is one of the things also that contributes to the way it sounds. Um, so I went with a 5Y3. Uh, it, it should be smaller. We should get some sag. It should do the trick with the 6AG7 tubes. We don't have huge power requirements here. So anyway, this is my take on it, and at least first schematic. Now, these are all subject to revision, obviously, when, when actually putting these together. But... Um, this is one uh, potential use for the 6AG7 power tubes. Now, if I had bet somebody a beer at a bar uh, that they could guess the inspiration for the next schematic, uh, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten a free beer, if not several. The single-ended amp is based on, or inspired by, the El Pico AC52, which was an English amp uh, from the, the 50s or the 60s. Anyway, El Pico... And thank you to Kieran Bradley, 3238, who we had an exchange on our last video when I was talking about the uh, Watkins Westminster. El Pico made amps that were more for sound uh, amplification, i.e. phonographs, reel-to-reels, things like that. But they actually turned out to be pretty good for... uh, for guitar use also in the AC-52. It's a little single-ended amp, and when I looked at the schematic, I, I was kind of just kind of shook my head for a second and said, whoa. The original schematic has an EL-34, and then it has the standard sort of two gain stages we'd see in a U.S.-made single-ended amp. But then it's got another one. on. Uh, actually, it had uh, another whole... 12AX7 that each input and the gramophone used, you had two 12AX7s and an EL84 for the original version. This 6AG7 is going to output again about 3 watts, and then you've got the regular sort of volume and tone here within this 12AX7, and I used a 6AV6 so I wouldn't... uh, waste half of a 12AX7 in the initial preamp stage. But the only video I've seen of this amp, the AC-52, this is a gainy little beast. And I suspect this version is going to be just as growly. It's crazy, I know, to add another gain stage to a single-ended amp. Imagine your vibro champ with, with another gain stage entirely. And and you're, you're kind of getting the idea. So, yeah, it's, it's a little monster. And, uh, again... Um, we're using a 5Y3 rectifier. Some of the things I've changed really involve different values on the on the capacitors, but um, for the most part, I've, I've sort of kept the um, spirit of the original schematic. And uh, credit to Ian Woolage, uh, the, who's got the only AC52 and AC55 schematics that I know of on the Internet. Um, in fact, those are the only two. El Pico schematics that I can find at all, and uh, and the AC55 is a cool amp in its own right, but uh, yeah, so when I get to building on this thing, I'll let you know, or if somebody wants to start in on this before me, feel free, I'll, I'll 
post a link to the schematics at some point um, pretty soon. Well, there you go, friends. Appreciate you coming on this random tube adventure with me. Uh, I've got a couple of projects going on right now, but I hope to get to these uh, and maybe build them in the near future. I'm going to post the schematics uh, on my website, and uh, if you get to them before I do, great. Let me know how they work out. Again, these are uh, prototype schematics. I have not built these yet, but I think the basic idea is, is sound. If you should happen to notice that a component is out of place or a, a value is suspect um, or something's not connected as it should be, please leave a comment and I'll take a look at it. And if need be, I will uh, correct the schematic and repost it. Um, I, I want everybody to have a, a correct schematic for sure. Um, and I, you know, I'm like everybody else. Another set of eyes is always good. And uh, 500 sets of eyes is terrific. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. And I hope you found this educational or informational or entertaining. One of the three would be great. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. But for now, I'm going to say so long and go build something.